Well, good evening, folks. Um, this is the pastor of the Christian Hearts Christian Fellowship Online Ministry, and on on today's sermon, I want to talk to y'all about. Well, I've been having some trouble lately with a young man who basically decided that he wanted to use Wi-Fi, and regardless if I had it or not, he wanted to use it over here if I had it. And I didn't want to say nothing to him because I didn't want him to be over here all the time. And he basically took and um, um, keep being over. I thought he'd want to be over here a lot. Well, he kept wanting to go to my door, wait on me. And it was sort of like the old saying, waiting on a person like a dog at a door. And God don't like that. God wants us all to become friends and family and get along together, not scare someone to the point of if I get out they're going to start stuff I'm older than him and you know, no matter your size in life you should think about the size called age not the size called height because God knows that if you respect your elders you will get more out of life than you would because God knows that David had a problem with Goliath but he had to understand that Goliath had to respect David because in a sense David was more mature than Goliath and when you're mature in some ways more than others you have to respect folks more so and if you look in um, Psalms 92 which I've been going through that recently because Another preacher, as a matter of fact, on radio was doing the same thing, and his point that he was making made some sense, because I knew the guy, and I actually have met him before and knew him personally, and his thinking was, yeah, it made sense, because he was basically saying that what he was trying to do was basically say, that that was a place in the Bible about the Sabbath day. God did what he done by breaking the Sabbath day rule to say that he was trying to, um, how's that go, Uh, to basically prove a point that miracles don't have schedules. They don't have pointed times and, People always got mad about that because they thought that a miracle was a job of God's and that a job in general did not need to be done on Sunday. But God don't rest. We have to understand that companies don't usually take it so seriously about the religious stuff in life. And I know this because I've been there before. And I've seen it before, and I got tired of it myself when people do that mess. They don't care about you or me or anyone for that matter, so they pretty much just say what they want to say and be what they want to be about it and don't care about our feelings. And we have to understand that when people do that, they're not looking at you like friendly and they're not looking at you like friends. They're saying that we don't matter to them, and that's a sad statement that goes in life, and it comes out that way and we just have to understand and I noticed recently where I live I seen some commotion which led me to wonder if part of that wasn't someone moving in and if so look I know neighbors around here who would be nosy to find out what was going on without even missing a beat would do it and don't even bother to find out what's going on They want to find out before they find out, which means I'll find out so I can be nosy, but I won't find out, as in wait a while, to see if it's a new friend or something, because I don't see the point in all this being nosy about it. Being nosy and getting to know who your neighbors are is two different things. When you be nosy, it's like, what if, who is it that I'm going to be... friends with now that when they die if they die at the apartments what can I get out of them and you might say that's ridiculous what I said but I I know it because I've seen it and I've been there with it 
And it hurt my feelings to think that a lot of you people have to go through life looking at me and a lot of folks like we're stupid because we don't get what you're saying. When we do, we get it. We know what you're about. And God does too. And he don't put up with it. And I wish I wish that while I was doing this that I didn't have to worry about my future as in what someone's going to say or do to me. But if you care about a person, like you say you do, folks, you wouldn't bother them so much. And if you do, it better be a dire emergency because I wonder with folks why you say you got to do stuff around them when you had all this time to do it beforehand. You had all this time to bring it up before, but you didn't until now. So I say, well, if this is so true what you're saying, why now? Why'd you wait till now to do it? Because it's not what you said. It's really about what you're doing. You're saying that you care about people, but if you care so much about them, you wouldn't do them like you do them. You would be like, look, I understand that you don't want to deal with me because I make you feel uncomfortable, and we got to work this out to where it goes God's way, not man's way, because an uncomfortable situation has got to be brought to its knees by God. It's got to be put to an element of let it go and let it be. I'm sorry, folks, that I didn't do you and others like I should, but I'm admitting to it. If I've done y'all dirty in any way, I apologize, but at least I'm going to do better. I'm going to do better with my life if I can help it. And I want y'all to understand I'm sorry if I've ever put y'all on a uncomfortable road because that's not my place. I wasn't trying to. But God is going to get this thing worked out where people can look at others with respect and with honor and not be scared of each other. Because, you know, I like my I like my peace to a certain point, but once that point is reached... I like to be around others, and I don't want people to put me through this. You know, like, if I, if you people right now came up to me and told me what you thought of me, yeah, of course, if you say something that God don't like, I'm going to dislike it too. But if you say something that pleases God about what you think of me, then I'm going to say I did that because I loved y'all, because I put my feelings aside because I... If God's happy, I'm happy. So my feelings are only controlled by God's feelings. And if God's happy with what I do, then I am too. Because that's what goes on in life. And you have to learn to respect that. And today is the 29th. And with it being the 29th, I did a one last night. Whether I sent it or not, that's another thing. Because way I had set up my phone or my de- my phone and any other devices I have that I do this with. But folks, do realize I love y'all and I do respect y'all. And if y'all have a problem with me doing this, explain it and I'll do better. But I know my scheduling's a little off, but I'll try my best from now on to do better. Pray for me because there's a lot of things I go a normal human being. Normal human being should be somebody that has to understand and to look to God and say, God, I got a problem with a lot of stuff. It's messing me up with my business. And my business is the business of God, and I want to stick with that being my business and being my way of life. I don't want to grow to a point in my life where I have to be off kilter with all I have to do. And, yeah, of course, I want to know if I get new neighbors, of course, but there's sometimes you're going to get new neighbors you won't know about till years down the road, and then there's na- new neighbors you get that you will know about ASAP. And I hope if there's something good about these people, if I get new neighbors, I said if I do, that it won't be something that somebody will try to take advantage of and say, oh, you know, these people are somebody that I want to, do 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 with and I'm like if that do 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 is replaced by a bad word no if it's replaced by a word of I want to be their friend and their neighbor and be something that they can 
get along with, well, of course, never replace a de doot de doot de do with something nasty because I understand that you're going to get neighbors that are going to be something that you eyeball and oogle, but do not let those positive that could go dirty attitude get you in trouble because you can say, oh, that's a beautiful woman. Yeah, but do not let that attitude go to a point of you want to go do some immoral things. If it if you ever get a friend or neighbor or otherwise that wants to go to the land of the devil with certain things or with anything, tell them no. You need to go to the land of God and not be all this about the land of the devil because we cannot be doing this. I've seen too many people in this world they have problems in their lives, so they think that by doing certain things, they're going to solve it. But what they just told themselves, excuse excuse the background noise, that was an alarm going off, letting me know that I had a message on email, basically. But anyway, the truth of it all is that, okay, people, we know where we stand with God, and we know where we stand with each other. But what I don't get with you people, and do realize when I say you people, I mean the people I mean is the inner man. Like I always say, the inner man can be the center man if he ain't right with God. If he ain't right with God, like I said, the inner man can be the center man. So if I say you people, do remember, that's my definition for the inner man who has sinned now you pe- now if i say something positive like you people that did something good then you got a good inner man and i'm talking to you people with a good inner man if i say you people and i mean you done something wrong then those of you that done that thing you didn't do it your inner man done it and i'm talking about him So if I say something, so if I say you people and I say something positive, then y'all had a good inner man and he done something good. If I say something bad and say you people, that means y'all had a bad inner man and I'm talking about him. And you know you people will sit there and talk about how you want to run your life. But when you don't put yourself to a test in life, when you don't deal with certain people from a distance, you don't really know what you're talking about. I've been down that road before, and I've seen it before, and I know how that feels. It don't feel good or bad. I mean, I've seen it where men would say to themselves how they would feel or not feel about people. And the next thing you know, well, they got in trouble because they lied about themselves. They told people what they wanted done or not done, and they lied about it. They couldn't actually tell the truth because telling the truth Like me, for instance. Yeah, I try hard every day to be a man of God. But you don't know how hard that is and how much of a test you go through with it every day. You get tested every day by the devil. You get tested to want to say and do things you shouldn't say and do. You get tested to want to talk to people in manners that God said, Hold on, buddy. No, don't do it. We... See, the devil, oh, he's not, he is a sharing person. He is a sharing character. But what he shares is all the tests he gave God. He gave God and Jesus multiple tests. And he tells God and Jesus that they get respect from him, but just enough respect to all the, and he's funny about it. He hates us so much, and God so much, to a respect of that every trouble and trial and test that he gave God and Jesus, he shares those same troubles and trials and tests with us. And when he does it, he laughs. He says, yeah, I said I share, but come on. You think I'm going to share anything good with y'all? No, I'm going to share with you the same mess I gave God. I gave God a test. I gave Jesus a test. Now I give you those tests. 
I gave God trials. I gave the devil. I mean, I gave Jesus trials. I'm going to give you those too. Troubles and trials and toils. The devil gave to God and Jesus, so he gives them to us too. He says, if you're going to be God's, and God's definition of it, as in human beings who are God-like but are not God himself, as in we were made in the image of God, that kind of thing. Like Adam and Eve was made in the image of God, that kind of thing. Well, as I'm saying, those things that God and Jesus endured from the devil, we endure them too because he said, if you're going to be anything like God in some ways, and in some ways you're not because, come on, we can't have all the power that God has, but we have some of the powers that God has, and God says the powers that he has, that he gave us, only those powers are the ones we use. The other powers that he has that we don't inherit, those are the powers he keeps to himself and only to himself. And with that respect, the devil knows all this. So he said, oh, well, okay, so you're going to be godlike. So I'm going to be giving you exactly just as much trouble as I gave God. But look at Job. Look at old Job. Oh, boy. Devil, you had your hand full of that, dude. Yeah. And you know what? We got to not only be like God, but with our faith, we got to have the faith of Job. We got to stand up and be like the faith of Job. And I got, I, I can hurt you some more, devil. You know how I can hurt you some more? I ain't going to just talk about Job. I'm going to talk about. One day, one day I saw a St. Jude. Ooh, Jude. Oh, the faith of Jude. Have the faith of Jude for God. Have the faith of Job for God. Have the faith of the new Adam for God. Now, what's the new Adam in my book? The Adam after he realized where he should have been the whole time with God. The repentive Adam. The repentive Adam. The Christian Adam, not the sinner Adam. That right there is Facebook going off. But, I'm going to tell you something. The new Adam. and I have a biblical dictionary in my head. Everybody has dictionaries in their head, but their dictionaries are not dictionaries as in what a real dictionary says. It's a dictionary of what they say of stuff. Like in my book, uh, called in my dictionary, there really was no new Adam. I call him new Adam as in the Adam that got right with God, the Adam that got good with God. That Adam, his faith with God, devil, that was the first person you should have had a problem with. The new Adam, the old Adam, he's gone. He done, he done realize he screwed up with Eve, so he's going to be a new creature in Christ. He's going to be a repentive man, a, a, a Christian Adam, not a sinner Adam. You might have, you might have made the sinner Adam, the sinner Adam, through the temptation of the snake and the way that Eve done. And then again, you got to think about it. When Adam became the new Adam, so did Eve become the new Eve. That means the new Adam and Eve are the Christian Adam and Eve. And with their faith and with the faith of Noah, Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, I go on and on with it. You ought to be looking at people like us like, not again. I couldn't do it with Job, and I can't do it with you. What is wrong with you? Well, when the more of us Job's, and the more of us St. Jude's, and the more of us New Adam's and New Eve's, and and the good brother of Cain and Abel, come on, you know it. The good brother is dead, but the sinner brother is alive. But he might as well have been dead himself because sure as he dies, he's going to hell. So what was the big deal of it? We may kill our kind-hearted brother today. But tomorrow we're going to get our just rewards. We're going to go to hell. 
And, and you know what? God doesn't condemn you or talk bad about you or do you any harm if you have to go to work on Sunday. Because he knows you need the money and he knows that your boss ain't a Christian man. And he, he don't blame it on you. He blames it on your boss. He says your boss needs to get a heart for God. He needs to be on fire for God. He needs to do things to accept the fact that this is how it is. Uh, it's hard for today's world to accept that there is a God in Jesus and to let him be this first boss in your life. I thought that your first boss was God and your second boss was Jesus and your third boss was whoever you work for. But apparently people haven't ever heard of the system of God as the first boss and Jesus as the second boss. They don't see all this like we do. They say that God didn't even do nothing. God's just something we made up just to get out of doing stuff. I'm sorry, but if that was all that, I sure enough wouldn't even be bringing it up. I got more morals than that, you know. I don't think I'd be using God like that to get out of something. If I wanted to use God for something, I'd use God to fight the devil because I believe in God and I take God seriously. That's what I would use God for. Use God for what you believe in in God. If you didn't believe in God, don't use his name. People will take it. Or people use God's name in vain. I believe in, I believe that the whole concept of using the Lord's name in vain is not just to cuss his name, but to also use it inappropriately. Think you're going to say you're a Christian to get customers. There's been in history times when jobs were getting low on customers, so they started putting religion in their business, and they were coming. Well, that's good, but if you don't care about God, don't use God for profits. God ain't no lottery. God ain't no stock market. God ain't no kind of profit making. If you want God to be in your business, then you honor God and you expect your co-workers and your customers to respect God too. Don't put yourself in that position where you can't even say nothing or do nothing. Where it's like you're sitting there you're saying, I'm getting bad business, so what do I do? Oh, by the way, all of a sudden, I got religion. Did you really, or are you just playing? I spot like that manipulative criminal who went to jail. That manipulative criminal, the ones that fake their new belief in God, those are the ones you got to watch out for because they don't believe in God. If they did, they wouldn't sit there and do it. I know a man now that, I'm not going to name names, but he went to jail or prison for something he'd done. And I believe with all my heart that he is a good reformed Christian and a reformed prisoner. Reformed Christian means at one time I saw God, but I didn't see him like I should have seen him. And I got in trouble for it. And I had to go to jail for it or prison. And I got out with a new respect on God and a new lease on life. I believe that about this man. He's my friend and I respect him. If I didn't respect him, I wouldn't be bragging about him right now. He's a good man. He did his problems. If he had done something worse than that, I would have thought about it. Should I be his friend? But, you know, like they say, even people like, Charles Manson could get it right. And that's not even who I'm talking about. Because I don't know if I'd want to be friends with old Charlie Manson. Because he ain't even got his butt together. Come on now. You know it. Now let's pray folks. Dear Lord we pray that each person that ever heard what I ever said in preaching. Will get it right with God today before it's too late. All of you folks out there in the airwaves need to understand. Y'all are not subject to nothing. Y'all are subject to the laws and the rules of God just like I am. I love God just like you do. But if we can't get it straight, I don't know what. And I pray that all these neighbors of mine will get it straight with you, God, before it's too late. And I pray that they'll put themselves on the straight and narrow path to righteousness and that they'll get it right with God before it's too late. 
I pray, dear Lord God and Jesus, for all the criminals, all the crooks, all the meanies, and all the baddies out there will get it straight with you before it's too late. I pray for my friends and neighbors. I pray for Heritage Baptist Church of Broxton, Georgia. I pray for all churches and all religions. I pray because I believe that when you listen to the airwaves, you can listen to a Methodist man. You can listen to a Baptist man. You can listen to a Catholic man. Even a Messianic Jewish man. And I I met a Messianic Jewish man once. He was a good man. I'm glad my paths crossed with that man because he showed me a side of it that I didn't even know. And it made me on fire to want to know about those folks because they're basically the Christians of Judaism. And I know that, but I even respect the Jewish man. And I'm saying, I pray that all you people could bond with me and believe in that same respect for religions that God approves of. Because every religion that God approved of, so do I. And I wish you up and pray, you Christians will rise up and do such as that too. Because I don't see nothing wrong with that. And I wish and hope and pray that all you people around the world could come together and become friends, learn from each other and understand each other and get it right with everyone around the world. I pray for the sick in all ways. If you're sick in any way, I pray that you'll get healed and well and be better off as you were before. And be able to run your lives, your jobs and your stability and your families and whatever you run in your world I pray that if it is something to do with God, that you'll be back on track with it. And I pray that my schedule will get worked out, and I'll be able to help you people out. I pray in the precious name of God and Jesus' name I pray. Amen, amen, and amen, and amen.